I've extended Unreal Lyra's sample project to include a debug menu, and this allows you to easily toggle any gameplay logic related to the player. And it persists between play, so if you want to keep the ammo unlimited all the time, it will remember when you play again in editor or in a package build. I made sure to omit this from a shipping build. These are fully customizable. In a nutshell, all these do is add a gameplay tag to the player if this is on. I'm sharing my code so you can add it to your project. I've aimed to make it as easy to integrate in your project that's based off of Lara. So this is a result of this tutorial after adding the code to a fresh Lyra 5.5 project. And there was just a few changes to make for configuration files and just one blueprint widget change, uh, which I'll cover in the tutorial part of this video. And then after setting all of that, all you can do to customize it to your own project is to set up which gameplay tags get added or removed. And it also works multiplayer. So if your client it toggles on unlimited ammo, they will have unlimited ammo and it works for all the local players on the machine. So why use gameplay tags and what are those? So if you're not familiar with the gameplay ability system or gameplay tags, gameplay tags are really awesome and very customizable. So it's essentially a gameplay tag registry or list. So if I click on manage gameplay tags, you can see that Lara has a bunch of tags and you can add as many as you want. So if I search for unlimited ammo health, you can see that they have a hierarchy to them and it's easy to ask the actor hey do you have this tag you can also ask hey do you have any of these cheat tags so it's different from just actor tags because it's it has a hierarchy and it's unique so for an actual example okay so if i play i'll just make sure to have unlimited health apply Okay, so I shouldn't die as fast. So if I press the home key, which just toggle the gameplay debugger, and then I will press the end key, which just toggles to the next category, you can see that the own tags are as follows. So there's cheat unlimited ammo, cheat unlimited health, which I added to my uh, debug menu. And then Lyra adds this Lyra.player. So that's useful for finding out if that actor is a player instead of just asking what class it is or whatever else. And then Lyra also has this really useful gameplay tag for movement mode. So if you jump, you have movement mode dot falling. If you're walking, then it's the walking. And that's already super useful for, for just asking an actor if it's currently walking or falling without having to, to query the, the whole character movement component and check its state and all that. As you can see, gameplay tags are super powerful and it just really made sense to to just apply a gameplay tag and let your, your game logic take care of what that does when that tag is applied. And here you can see these two are the dynamic tag with infinite duration that my logic adds. So if I go to my options, it's a bit hard to read with this over there. Uh, if I turn off ammo, it will remove that gameplay effect and it will remove that cheat. And if I turn it on, you can see that it's back. So this is essentially all that my logic does. Just apply a gameplay effect of infinite duration with this tag and then it saves it in the user player settings and then the next time you play, it reads that value and it re-adds those gameplay effects. Yeah, gameplay effects is another thing of the gameplay ability system, which if you're not familiar with, is super useful and I recommend you check it out. For another example, in Portobello's, I'm using this menu to easily toggle on and off abilities or easily disable them. Um, so let's say I am supposed to pick up the glide earlier in the run or in the world and I'm just testing a certain area, I can easily just turn on that gameplay ability. So in this case, when it's on, I can actually use that ability. And if I if I forgot it, I could always go to my options, debug, and then just enable it. And if for some reason I do pick up that ability, then I can also disable it if I want to. More on that setup a little bit later in the video if you're interested in how these tags even work with that 
sort of system. I wanted to give my thanks for whoever made Lyra sample. In this case, the Lyra advantage was that it already fully takes advantage of common UI uh, to have these discrete options populating this nice UI. And I learned from that example to generate uh, my own and just have an on and off. The modular UI was already taken care of. And also it's nice because Lyra had local player user settings that save to a file already set up. So that was also a very awesome learning experience and a nice way that I could save my debug settings. A side note on installing a certain version of Lyra's starter game. Sometimes when you create the project and you can't select the version of the engine, I mean, in this, in this case, I can. What I found works is to remove the local content and then the options should show up. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new Lara starter game project and I'm gonna choose the 5.5 version and I'm gonna call this one debug menu toot for tutorial and I'm gonna create. Go ahead and navigate to my GitHub repo and it's just called debug menu tags and I'll share the links in the, the video's description. And here you have a few choices. So either you could just grab all of the files and just download the zip, or you could clone it. And I made sure to only include the files that are changes from Lara. The other thing you could do is if you want to just copy changes, you can navigate to this commit where I have the changes that happened. One big change I did compared to my other tutorials is I tried to avoid changing Lyra files as much as possible. Uh, so any file that is prefixed with my, feel free to rename it to the prefix of your, your company or your game. The parts that might be worth just doing line by line are all of the files that are Lyra files, like uh, where I implemented unlimited ammo or this this very few lines in Lyra game mode just to use the advantage of inheritance to have changes that are in other files. Um, so let's say just like using your own player controller uh, to have the logic from this tutorial and whatever else logic that you would want to add to your project. So yeah, this is my first step towards having less pain whenever I upgrade my project to the latest Lara. One last point, another few files that are worth going line by line because the diff is very small. So if you paste that file, it'll be a lot of maybe conflicts with your own project. Those two config files, I just have a few changes to it. So it's, it's nicer to copy from here. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and just get the whole repo. And I'm just going to copy paste in my brand new Lyra 5.5 Unreal project. So I'm going to go ahead and download this zip. And then I'm just going to go ahead and extract all of this. Okay, and, and then I'm going to copy everything but the git files or the license. Uh, this code is free for you to modify and anything. And I'm going to copy this over to my Unreal repo. So wherever you save your, your new project or wherever your project is located. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to paste that. In my case, I'm going to replace all the files in, in the destination. And yeah, since this isn't a git repo, I won't have a nice history of the diffs and it's not really a merge. And I should have all the C++ logic I need. So in my case, I'm just going to open this with writer. In your case, you might have to open the project and then generate project files for Visual Studio to make a solution. Okay, so I'm going to open it with writer. And I trust and open. Okay, and then I'm gonna build and compile this to open up the Unreal Editor. Once that's open, the only blueprint change we have to do is to the setting screen. So go ahead and search for Lyra setting screen or it'll show up right away. And this is just a screen that showcases all of the setting registry or anything that's registered as a setting. Um, so when you play, it's whatever populates these tabs over here. Uh, so since we're going to add another tab and it's added in our code, uh, we just need to reparent this blueprint. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the graph and then the class settings. And our new class is called my setting 
screen. Okay, and then compile and save. And we had to do that uh, because, well, the only difference that my setting screen has compared to Lara is that it creates our own game setting registry. Uh, so that's an, another nice way that uh, we don't have to edit the Lyra files and that setting registry is just a child of the Lyra game setting registry and it enables us to add more game setting collections. So in our case, it's just a debug setting collection and it's initialized in this C++ file. And all we care about is to add this debug collection to our, our, our widget blueprint. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this dev name because that's what we're going to use to populate that new tab. Okay, so back here, and if you want to know more about this, these setting tabs, I do have another video on the subject, and I'm happy I could do another video with a more concrete and useful uh, setting tab. Okay, so we're going to register a new top level tab. Yeah, so I'm going to search for register top level tab. And I'm going to paste that setting dev name here that is initialized in code. Okay, and then I'm going to I'm going to just hook it up over here. And another thing that I made sure with my code is that this logic and this tab doesn't show up in a shipping build because you might not want those debugs or those uh, those cheats to work in a shipping build. So another node we want to add is a uh, I think it's configuration. All right, get build configuration. So then is equal to, and I think it has to be exactly, and then shipping, and I'm gonna make a branch. Ah, if we're not shipping, that's right. If we're not exactly, that'll be nicer to read. Okay, so if we are not shipping, then we do want to register this tab so that this uh, widget will show all of the settings that we just set up. And that's it for the blueprint change. Okay, so now when I play, I'll see the debug options. And this is where you could add whatever tag that you want or whatever tag that does logic in your game uh, to toggle off or on. And it's really nice that it, it remembers it between playthroughs. So yeah, it remembered. And if you ever want to change those, those settings, navigate to edit project settings, and then it's under a, a game setting called gameplay debug settings. And all I did was add a array of this nice struct. So uh, you can specify a display text. So you don't all just have to look at at the tag and it's it's a bit more readable in your UI. Uh, so this one, I didn't add any text. That's why you could see the tag itself. You could just delete all of those and then add your own. And the strength or the usefulness of this debug menu, it really relies on how you're using these tags. Uh, but it's it's really unlimited in the ways you could have those tags and how many you can have. So the, the power of gameplay tags is, is really strong here. Another thing is, so how, how does it save between it? It actually saves with the local player user settings and that will show up both for your, your project or for a package game. It would be saved in your saved config Windows editor or whichever platform. And then in your game user settings, it saved the desired screen width and all of, all of these other user settings. It will show up in the custom loosely added gameplay tags. So it only saves the tag when it's on. That's where it gets that information. And I also tested on the, the Steam Deck and that also worked. So it's, it's a great sign for other consoles or maybe because it was just uh, it's technically a Windows build. The naming here can be a little confusing because I, I used to add those tags to loosely added gameplay tags, uh, but then there was a nicer way that Lyra was doing it in code by adding a, a gameplay effect that has those tags to the player. And that you can you can just look at the 
at the code and it's i was inspired by how they handled their unlimited health and their god mode for a little bit more information about how i set that up my character they technically own all of the abilities that they will have and then each of these abilities so let's say i'm going to search for the glide ability so hero glide okay so technically even if the player hasn't uh, picked up that ability yet they do have it on them and i just have in the tag category i have activation required tag the ability glide owned and then the activation block tag ability glide disabled that's a nice easy way to use those tags to just enable or disable being able to use that ability every ability has a owned or disabled tag and it just works with the debug i'm finding that this extension debug menu is a great start for a debug menu for other things than just applying player uh, loose tags uh, so for example maybe you want uh, a gameplay tag to be applied to everybody not just the local players and so maybe there could be different categories you could have a category for uh, let's say granting health to everybody or or giving some currency to your player i think that, i think that this is just the beginning of this i was very excited to uh, to share it here uh, and see what people do with it it's it's funny because i I just started with just the need of having uh, ability toggles and it turned into something way more general and useful for other applications. I hope you find it a time saver as much as I do and don't have the problem of packaging a build and just remembering, ah, no, the, the player start is here, but the player doesn't have these abilities yet. Oh, okay, I, I can just toggle these abilities on. Or if you're testing something, you want unlimited ammo and you don't want to have to type in the cheat every single time, it will remember that you had that on. I gotta say that sometimes I, I do forget that some settings are on and I'm scratching my head a little bit, uh, but the benefits really outweigh the cons in, in this case. And yeah, I'm curious to see how you end up using this debug menu. If you're interested in learning more about Lyra's player settings, be sure to click on this link or any other suggested one. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Patreons, for your support. And see you all in the next video.